And good evening, everyone. Welcome to another exciting Saturday Night Wine Stream and another exciting edition of Drink with Rick. I'm Rick, and tonight we're going to try something a little bit different, as we always do. And this one is going to be a wine from a big box store. Yes, not just a wine that I purchased from a big box store, but a wine that is, uh, well, it's labeled from a big box store. And I'm talking about Sam's Club. This would be a Members Mark 2017 Zinfandel. Now, the last time we really did this, actually, I think the only time we really did this was, well, no, excuse me, we've done that twice. The first time we did this was um, in the very first wine stream in 2019. And uh, that was the uh, Target wine, the Target Collections wine. And I believe that was a cab. And then we did it, uh, I think, tour, uh, uh, during the holidays. We did it in uh, the end of 2019 uh, with a, it was a recommendation from a good friend of ours uh, that we tried a, and he actually gave gave me a bottle to, to uh, do here on the wine stream. And we did try it, and that was uh, from Costco. So tonight we're going to try one from Sam's Club. It should be a little bit different. If you're just joining me for the first time, welcome, welcome. And even if you're joining me for the 57th time, which this would be the 57th episode of Drink with Rick on the Saturday Night Wine Stream, uh, I would like to welcome you. And uh, for those who are new, for those who are brand new or just tuning in for the first time, this is a stream of consciousness kind of show where we don't really script it or anything like that. I have some show notes, but I don't always follow them verbatim. And we do, we open up a bottle of wine, we review it, we, uh, we taste it, we pair it with some food, we toast birthdays, anniversaries, national days, and we just sit back and, and just have a good time. And lately, we've also been learning about the different grapes, and we're going to do that tonight. We're going to learn a little bit about the Zinfandel grape, and I'm going to take you through some of that tonight. So it should be educational as well as fun. Okay, so stick around. I hope you enjoy it. If you're uh, wanting to watch this, you can watch, of course, on Facebook. Uh, if you're connected with me on Facebook, you can watch on our Facebook page, Drink with Rick. You can watch on YouTube. YouTube is, is Drink with Rick also. Look that up, and you can join in the chat there. And please, join in the chat, absolutely. Also on Twitch, we're uh, Drink with Rick 1, the number one, Drink with Rick 1 on Twitch. So join in there. And we're also uh, on Periscope, so you can also watch on Twitter. You can watch our, on our Twitter feed at Drink with Rick. Uh, of course, our podcast, if you miss the show, you can always catch it later on, on several of these venues, as well as our website at drinkwithrick.com. You can watch live at drinkwithrick.com. You, uh, you, you can't get into a live chat there at the moment, but you can if you click on the page that this is uh, posted on, then you can comment in the comments below, and I will respond in kind. And... We, uh, we do the podcast. The podcast comes out, if you want to he listen to it, if you want to hear it instead of watch this, uh, you can hear it. It goes out at 10 p.m. each Monday night, 10 p.m. each Monday night at drinkwithrick.com and also on, uh, oh, just everywhere. Spotify, you can listen on Spotify, you can listen on uh, uh, Stitcher Radio, you can listen at uh, all, all, a lot of different venues. You can actually subscribe. Here we go. Here's a, a whole subscription list. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. Tune in uh, on your Android device, on your Apple device. On, um, well, a Deezer, of course, if you, and iHeartRadio, we're on iHeartRadio, of course, and uh, a number of a number of other places, pretty much anywhere you can find podcasts, and uh, of course, at drinkwithrick.com, and you can contact me if you, if you want to uh, chat with me, recommend a wine to drink, or uh, uh, if you're interested in sponsoring the show, I'll take sponsors, whatever, uh, any, anything at all. Do you, you want to talk to me? Uh, except spam. I, I, we've been receiving some spam. I, I'm, I'm not fond of spam, but uh, as long as you're not uh, outright selling me stuff, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll listen. And if you're not trying to scam me, too. Uh, I've received a few of those lately. I don't know if we're going to talk about it tonight, but we will at some point uh, uh, in the stream, I'm sure. And uh, you can also contact me at rick at savoyamedia.com. That's rick at s-a-v-o-i-a-m-e-d-i-a.com. That's the uh, email address. All right, so tonight what we're going to do is, uh, and let me check before I start. Let me see if we have anyone in the chat. Uh, nothing going on on um, YouTube. 
on uh, Twitch. I'm checking Twitch, uh, Twitter. Not a whole lot going on there uh, right now, but uh, I am I'm, I'm keeping an eye on all these. And of course, we're on Facebook. So join in on the chat on Facebook. Tell me what you're drinking. Tell me what you'd like to be drinking. Tell me what you'd like to see me drink. And uh, I'll see if it's reasonably priced. I'll see if we can we can uh, get a bottle and, and try it out and review it. Tonight, I also have uh, a nice, to pair with the wine, I have a nice platter that my lovely wife, Chi, prepared for me. This is a, um, a little bit of spaghetti and meatballs that she made for dinner tonight. And uh, I think we have some uh, corned beef that my wife prepared a couple of nights ago. And uh, some, uh, I think this is a hibachi chicken and a hibachi uh, uh, steak, and also some uh, Colby cheese, Colby Jack, and uh, this, I think this is a sharp cheddar. It's either medium or sharp cheddar. We're going to try all these, and also an apple pie for dessert. We're going to try a little bit of that with the wine, see how that pairs as well. So what are we drinking tonight? I'll show you. What we're drinking, drinking tonight is a Zinfandel. This is a Member's Mark Zinfandel. It's an old vine uh, Zinfandel. This is a 2017 from California. Now, the interesting thing about this wine is that, uh, first of all, it is not just sold by Sam's Club, but it is branded by Sam's Club. This is a member's mark wine, or as I like to affectionately call it, a uh, member's markup. <laughs> That's a joke. Uh, <laughs> sometimes. But uh, the Members Mark wine is Sam's Club's house brand, their own brand. So this is a Sam's Club branded wine. Now, whether it's actually bought... Now, of course, the grapes are not grown by Sam's Club. I'm pretty sure of that. Uh, and the, the wine may or may not be actually fermented by Sam's Club. It, it's possible that, that uh, it might be bottled by Sam's Club and, and then labeled by Sam's Club. We'll see. Um, but this is more or less it's branded as a Sam's Club wine. Let's take a look at the back of this bottle for just a moment. This is, uh, it says, Members Mark Zinfandel Lodi Old Vine 2017, and I'll explain the, the, the Old Vine uh, 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 notation there in, in a little bit. And this is from the Lodi region. Uh, Lodi has an ideal climate for growing exceptional grapes. And, uh, warm summer days and cool nighttime breezes from the ocean yield intense and full-flavored fruit. This is in Lodi, California. And, of course, I'm reading off that of the upper right hand corner of this label and I'm going to read the rest of this label as well because it's so that's interesting. Uh, this is an intense full flavored Zinfandel made using exceptional fruit sourced from some of the oldest vines in California. This old vine Zinfandel has rich blackberry and black cherry uh, uh, aromas Jammy fruit flavors with a hint of black peppercorn, balanced by complex French and American oak toast. So this should be very, very interesting. It's vented, it says vented and bottled by Four Corners Wines in Manteca, California. So there you go. That's where that actually comes from. It says per perfect pairing, according to this label. It says try with braised short ribs, chicken enchiladas, or a meaty burger. And I don't have any of those tonight. But I think I have a couple that might be the equivalent of that in some way or another. So we're going to try those as well. Uh, there is 14.5% alcohol by volume in this 750 milliliter bottle of wine. And as we all know, that that isn't always uh, necessarily verbatim. Sometimes it's considerably more. And Zinfandel is known for, for uh, the Zinfandel grape is known for producing uh, very high, uh, you know, wines in very high alcohol content. And uh, we'll get into that a little bit later, too, as we learn more about the Zinfandel grape. I'm excited to share that with you. Anyway, so this is the wine that we're drinking tonight. And we're going to try it out and see uh, what it tastes like. Now, I did a little checking on the Internet. And of course, obviously... Uh, there's not a whole lot. There, there wasn't a text sheet uh, or one sheet on this wine, per se, that I could find. And, of course, it was readily available, posted at Sam's Club. 
and uh, I, it was in a couple of places. Vivino had uh, references to it. Of course, they don't sell the wine. It's just really a Sam's Club exclusive, more or less. But it, um, it seems to get some fairly decent reviews. Fairly decent. But we do have, uh, according to Sam's Club, uh, we do have a price on this wine, $6.98 exclusively from Sam's Club. I'm looking at it from their site right here. And uh, that's about what I believe uh, we paid for it. My wife she went out uh, to Sam's the other day and she, she purchased it, uh, she purchased a bottle for me at my request. And, uh, yeah, you know, uh, I, I'm not going, I haven't been outside really. I mean, I've been outside for walks around the, the house in the neighborhood uh, in keeping with the stay home agenda here. But uh, my wife, uh, she's the designated person. You know, you're only allowed to have like one person go out to the supermarket to, to get groceries and things like that. So she is the designated person to go out there. She bundles up pretty good and, you know, she puts on almost almost a, what you'd call a hazmat suit not exactly but it's pretty close so she she goes out there to to stay safe and and makes her trips as quickly as possible during this pandemic and it comes right back and we go through a rigorous process of of um of uh, uh you know sanitizing and vetting everything before we get in the house is, is basically following protocol so this bottle of wine has been washed as a matter of fact so we're going to go ahead and open this bottle now, and to do that, I'm going to use my trusty foil cutter. We'll do that, and there we go. That was fairly simple, and of course, I've got my trusty decorker, as I like to call it sometimes, my mechanical corkscrew, and we'll set this over the bottle. And now this is a little awkward in this position, of course because I'm sitting down, but it comes out fairly easily. We'll get the cork later. So we've got this bottle open, and of course uh, I have to pour it out of the bottle. I have my trusty Veneto aerator from the Veneto Wine Lover set, and it is available online for $19.99 for the whole set, and I think that the aerator itself is available for something like uh, $12.99, something like that, from Amazon. And uh, I have the I have links to it on my website at drinkwithrick.com. And of course, to pour it, we're going to pour it or to um, to receive it the wine in a glass. We have my wonderful, beautiful uh, Galway genuine Irish crystal glass. That was given to me as a gift by my employers at uh, By Two Way Radios. So let's go ahead and pour a little bit of this wine in here. Just a little bit to get a taste. And uh, it's a pretty fairly dark complexion. We're going to let it, we're gonna let it uh, breathe for just a minute. While it's breathing, let me check the chat here. Uh, nothing going on in the chat uh, per se. I would like to say good evening, good evening to everyone, and let everyone know I'm here. <laughs> and let's see, anything else going on on YouTube? No, not at the moment. Twitch, not at the moment, but uh, we are here. I'm watching. And, of course, uh, Periscope. It looks like everything's running great tonight. That This is a, in stark contrast to last week, last Saturday night, and now we're, I'm going to explain that a little bit in, in, as we go into the actual wine relax and drink process, the, uh, the relax and drink part of the show, I should say. So this wine is breathing, not too heavily, I don't think. We're going to look at, uh, let's see, uh, I don't have any other, yeah, like I said, I don't really have any other stats on this wine, but, uh, yeah, that's it's pretty much all I got, it's mostly, uh, but I can, I can get aromas right here, I'm not, I don't have my nose under the glass, but it is pretty, pretty strong, very strong uh, fruit notes on this, 
Uh, it's very, I, the, the aroma is coming through very, very bold. I mean, it smells bold. And I'm getting some, I'm getting some blackberry on the nose. And uh, let's see, it smells a little oaky. Kind of smells jammy. Let's give it a taste. Mmm. Very bold. Very bold wine. It's um, it's it's kind of medium tannins in this. Medium tannins. It's fairly dry, and the finish is. Um, a pretty strong finish. I wouldn't say it's very acidic, but it's um, it's rather tannic. Getting a little bit of blackberry, definitely some oak, some pepper, peppercorn, a little little maybe a little mocha in this, maybe a little mocha. Uh, mocha. And this. Let's try a little bit more. It's it, it is pretty jammy. It, it it really is, but it's not sweet. I I think I saw someone post something earlier about it, it, this wine being kind of tasting a little bit on the sweet side going down, but not so much on the finish. I'm not getting that. To me, it tastes dry all the way. It's, it, it tastes fairly dry all the way. And then the finish, kind of a little bit of a lingering finish. Not real, real long, but it's okay. It's okay. I, it starts off a little, I, I, maybe, it's, it starts off a, a little bit uh, tart a little bit, I think, but Very strong fruits that it starts with, and then as it, it, during the finish, a lot of that subsides, and then you get more of the the pepper and the and the um, and the mocha kind of thing. Maybe a hint of vanilla. Maybe. Somebody said they tasted plum in this, but I'm not tasting it. I'm not getting any plum. Um, that needs not. From what I can tell, it's not bad. I'd say I've, I've had some, of, I've, I've had some um, better Zins that really just, you know, just really uh, stuck with me right away that I really liked. This one's okay. I wouldn't say it's the best Zin I've had, but certainly not the worst. Somewhere in the middle. It is very bold though. This is a very, very bold wine. Uh, dark, very dark um, complexion. Yeah, it uh, should be interesting to pair with some of the foods. Let tell you what, let's let's try pairing it with a few for a foods. But before I do that, foods foods. Before I do that, let me check and see if anything else is going on in the chat. Lee, um, thanks for for uh, stopping in and seeing us in the chat. Thank you. Stick around and tell me how you're doing. And uh, Lee, I have uh, uh, met officially met. We we were uh, 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 we were uh, uh, meeting uh, up at Podfest. Uh, a whole bunch of us were meeting up at Podfest, and uh, officially met her in person this year. And, and uh, a very nice person. And she's I, she's taken an interest in ham radio. So, I, uh, Lee, I apologize. I haven't gotten a chance to get back with you on that subject. But we we will we will talk about that at some point. It's just uh, it's been a little crazy ever since. Ever since Podfest, I had a whole. The thing about Podfest is we came right back from Podfest, and I had met so many people, and I and, and I connected again with so many friends, and there were a lot of big plans, things we were all going to do, that sort of thing. And then it all just as soon as Podfest ended, and the stay-at-home orders took place, it was all just lockdown, and we had to go straight home. And of course, I I got uh, uh, I caught the flu right away, so I was out sick for a week. So it, it was. And then, and then from there it was just stay at home work and and um, well it's been like that ever since. <laughs> so, 
Uh, it's been kind of crazy. It really has. But uh, I'm glad you're here. And stick around. And uh, let's see. We're, we're going to go ahead and pair it with some th foods. I'm, I'm eager to try this with... Now, the thing is about Zinfandel, they, Zinfandels will go good with certain... Uh, foods and they they were recommending I think uh, let's see we went back to the the back end of this and I think they were saying it goes good with uh, short ribs chicken enchiladas or a meaty burger and I don't have any of those things with me tonight but what I do have what I do have tonight is I have a uh, I believe this is a uh, filet mignon my wife found some at the store. I think the last there was. And she said, well, you know, we're going to have to do something special. We've been shut in for so long. Let's just do something special. And we've been having to cut back like everyone else. But it was just one of those things where you get to a point and you say, you know what? We just have to do something special one night just just to kind of give us a break from, from all the shut-in stuff and, and everything else that's going on. So she did that. She did a... She did a, um, a um, what was this? Not a stir fry. It was it was a, um, a hibachi. She made a hibachi this, and she did a, a chicken hibachi. This might be okay with that actually. Zins uh, goes pretty well with cheeses. A lot of d different varieties of cheeses. Let's check it with the pasta first. Now this is the closest thing I have to burger, which would be the meatball. It's a it's a it's a meatball. I'm gonna try it with just a little bit. I'm gonna try it with just a little bit of spaghetti if I can get it on my plate. Or on my fork, I should say, and the meatball. Let's give it a try. Mm. The spaghetti's good, by the way. Mm. Cold, but good. Mm. Not bad with spaghetti. Um, and the reason is there's there's a little bit of spaghetti sauce on it some tomato sauce but it's not real it's not a lot kind of light on the tomato sauce it was if it was heavier on the tomato sauce i'm not sure that this would go as well i've had some zins before that would be rather sour with the spaghetti sauce with the with the tomato sauce uh might be a little bit too acidic you know uh, that brings out the acidity in that little bit uh, this is this sort of uh, light on the acidity, this one is, but uh, there are some wines that, are, that you really want to have a good wine with uh, that's, that's a little more acidic and some, you know, with, with the tomatoes. I think the tannins help, and it's actually not bad. It's okay. I think this might go better with the meatball by itself, though. I think it will. We'll try it just just with the meatball and see what it does better with the meatball better <clears throat> a little better it's not a it's not a full full on hamburger but it's it's not bad it's it's okay Let's try it with, and I, I don't know if I'm expecting much from this. This is the, the, um, this is the corned beef that we had. This corned beef might be a little bit too, because there's peppercorns in here. This has a little bit of a, a peppercorn taste to it. This wine does, a hint of peppercorn. So this might, might match up. Surprisingly, surprisingly, I like that. Let's try another piece of that. Um, I mean, I, I shouldn't be too surprised because if they're putting peppercorn and corned beef, uh, there should be should be okay, right? Okay. Hmm. Not bad. Not bad. And it does. It is a little on on the oaky side. Let's try it with the chicken. Now it might be okay with the with the hibachi chicken because this is this is a hibachi chicken. It's a little bit different. It's got some soy sauce in it, and it might might work out okay with that. 
give it a try. You know what? It brings out the, um, it kind of brings out sort of a grilled taste on this. And the, these were not grilled, by the way, I don't think really. Oh, well, they were, I mean, over a kibachi grill, but more or less. Mm-hmm. I think this just works okay with the chicken. It's good, but mm. I like it okay. That's okay. The work with the chicken, it should work with this. Um, it's a filet mignon, isn't it? It's got you know, this a big chunk that might take me a minute or two to chew this up. Hmm. I guess I better pour a little bit more of this wine. Mm-hmm. Maybe I should pour a lot more of this wine. Mm. So this is taking me a minute to chew this out. Mm. I think I put too big a piece in my mouth. Mm. Wow. Okay, that I like. Goes really well with the. I try that again, but it's the, the piece are too big. It goes really well with the with the filet mignon. I, I like that. Okay, it's uh, it's good. I like that. The cheese, I'm not sure. Before I check with the cheeses, let's go back and see who's watching the live stream. If anyone looks like we got a couple of people watching here, but uh, nobody really. Oh yeah, okay. I take that back. I'm checking on Twitch. And it's uh, Mr. Mantastic. Uh, Mr. Mantastic has joined us, and it's good to see you. Thanks for joining us. He says, Rick, do a backflip. And he says, I believe in you. Just one backflip, please. Backflip, Rick. Not doing a backflip. Never could do it. I appreciate your faith in me, but uh, not going to do it. Not going to do that. Um, I'm, uh, I, don't think I'm, uh, I don't think I'm ready for a backflip ever. I'm not back flip Rick. Sorry. <laughs> but I'm uh I like to drink. I can do that. Now I tell you what, if I've had enough, I might try it and then that would not be good. So I better go easy on the wine then, right? We're gonna try a little this with a little bit of the sharp cheddar. I think it's a sharp cheddar. Now, if it's a good zen, this should go pretty well with this cheddar cheese. And um Goes well with the cheese. Will it go well with the Colby? I don't know. Now you know my wife didn't pack any crackers here for the for the trip up here upstairs, so I don't have any crackers to clear my palate. I think what I'll probably have to do is have a little bit of water instead. In between cheeses, I'm gonna clear my palate a little bit. Um, and so we're gonna try it with the Colby. Mm. And we'll refill the glass a little bit. There we go. It's okay with the Colby, but I think I like it better with the cheddar. See what I did there? Yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, I think overall, I think it, it pairs, uh, it'll pair, I think it'll pair pretty well with a burger, and we tested it with the thing, the closest thing to a burger. Um, their spaghetti, uh, yeah, it could be, be okay with spaghetti, as long as you don't overload it, I think, with the, with the meat, so, with the sauce. I think if this is going to be a sauce, it really should be a meat sauce rather than the tomato sauce, that's just my personal opinion. But it goes pretty well with the meatball. I liked it with the, the chicken, with the hibachi chicken. Really good with that uh, filet mignon, a little piece of filet mignon that was also hibachi, and uh, it went 
pretty well with both the cheeses, although I liked it better with the cheddar than with the Colby. It's not too bad. So that's kind of uh, where we are with the food pairing. Uh, I think that the, overall, I think this probably go, uh, this infantile would probably be good with a, a, a wide variety of foods. Um, I, and I definitely wouldn't have liked to have tried it with a burger, but I didn't have one tonight. Would have been interesting. I think it would go, it'll probably go pretty well with a lot of different grilled meats. I, I really think so. So um, that's, that's pretty much my review of the food pairing on that part with the Zinfandel. But I tell you what, we're not down halfway into the bottle yet. So, you know, as I've said many, many times before, sometimes it takes having to go through halfway down the bottle to really, really figure out if the wine is all that good. You know, as I said so many times before, it's easy to go to a wine tasting and you taste, have a sip here and a sip there. Uh, and, oh, yeah, everyone is good. I'll tell you what, half the time everyone is good because they're giving you a free tasting. And it, things taste better when they're free, isn't that right? When you're going through, let's face it, we're talking about Sam's Club here, but you ever go to Sam's Club and you go through all the samples? We've, we've had lunches on those samples, <laughs> going through all, hitting all the samples. Um, it, you feel it later, but, you know, the samples always taste great, don't they? And that's because they're free. Their samples are free. It didn't cost you anything. They just gave you a free sample, and they taste great. Now, if you happen to go out and buy a whole box of that, that you know, and we've made that mistake before a few times, uh, you know, you try the sample. Oh, sample's perfect. I'm going to buy a huge box of this. And, of course, you can't just buy a little box of anything at Sam's. It, it's a humongous box for the family and for the neighbors and for, you know, uh, your restaurant and everything else. You get it home and, and you open it up, you have a couple, and you're like, oh, man, this is not as good as I remember the sample being. And then, of course, you're stuck with a whole freezer or fridge full of, of this stuff, and you realize that, okay, I'm going to have to eat all this. <laughs> you ever done that? I've done it. Been there. Been there, done that. Uh, it still happens sometimes. Let's see who else is uh, here. David. David's in the chat. David uh, Bennett, uh, good to see you. Uh, David's... Um, uh, at least he's checked in, and uh, I want to say uh, st stop in and tell me how you're doing and um, chat with me. Stick around. Let's see. We're going to go right into the birthdays here at this point. I, well, actually, I don't really have any birthdays. This is actually one week, one week of the year, and I think this is kind of a first for the Saturday Night Wine Stream. First time that I haven't had any birthdays to toast. Now, I've gone... Weeks without any anniversaries to toast, and of course we always have the the uh, national days, thanks to our good friend Marlo Anderson from the NationalDayCalendar.com. But uh, usually we always have at least one or two birthdays, and some weeks we have a lot of birthdays. So we're going through the whole bottle pretty much toasting birthdays. But tonight I didn't have any birthdays come through. So if you know if you're having a birthday coming up this week or you know of someone that's having a birthday, please. Put it in the chat, tell me, let me know, and we'll toast. We'll toast to the birthdays. Um, Fister Math, uh, Mantastic, PhD, uh, you, you having a birthday anytime soon? Know anyone who ha is having a birthday anytime soon? Let me know. We'll toast it. So, um, I don't have any birthdays, but I do have an anniversary. I have a very special anniversary for some special friends of ours. And uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and toast them now. <clears throat> uh, our good friends, friends of family, Betsy and Scott Olinger. I want to toast their anniversary because uh, Betsy and Scott have been married for 27 years. 27 years. Um, and they were married on, uh, uh, was it uh, April 26? Um, oh, was it? Was it April 26? Yes, it was. 27 years ago, and uh, I want to say happy anniversary to uh, our good friends, Betsy and Scott. Here's to you. Betsy has been very, very instrumental, very helpful to helping my son Tommy, fellow podcaster, and my son um, to uh, prepare for college, and uh, he's been going to CPCC is about to graduate CPCC in another uh, 10 or 11 days with his AA degree. And then from there, this fall, he's going to be going off to Appalachian State, Appalachian State University up in Boone, North Carolina. And uh, she's been helping him prepare for that. And her son, uh, our families go uh, pretty far back. 
her son um, and my son have been uh, good friends since they were kids, very young kids, and uh, uh, lifelong friends. And um, he's going; he's attending Appalachian as well. And he gave us a nice tour uh, of Appalachian not too long ago. Anyway, uh, once again, here is to Betsy and Scott Olinger. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary to you. And may you have many, 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 many more. Um, and that's all I've got for birthdays and anniversaries. So I'll tell you what, let's go right into the national days. This show's going quick. I, told, I promised my wife I'd make it a, a quick show, and I think that's about what it's going to be. Anything else going on um, Twitch? Not really. And uh, nothing much going on on YouTube. So talk to me in the chat. Let's see. National Days. Let's do that. Well, I'll tell you what. You know, I was going to go ahead and do the, uh, the Zinfandel grape, but let's go ahead and toast the National Days first before we get into the grape. I have been doing the grape uh, first. Let me find my National Day calendar, nationaldaycalendar.com. And uh, let's see, May 2nd. Today's May 2nd, 2020. And May 2nd is National Truffle Day. Do you like truffles? I don't know which truffles you're talking about. I don't think they're talking about the chocolate truffles. I think they're talking about the truffle truffles. Um, National Truffle Day. Not really a big fan of truffles, to be honest, um, except the chocolate kind. Uh, National Life Insurance Day. Uh, okay, well, we'll drink to both of those, huh? Right? Today's also Kentucky Derby Day. That's the first Saturday in May. Okay, drink to that. Are they doing uh, the Kentucky Derby in uh, this year? Well, we'll see how they can. Um, National Fitness Day. Today, the first Saturday in May, is also National Fitness Day. And as you can see... As you can see from my physique, um, I uh, I observe, I celebrate National Fitness Day every day, right? Not really, but I've got to get back on the I've got to get back on the treadmill. I've got to get back literally on the elliptical and start working out again because uh, uh, I've gained I've gained some weight in the during this uh, while we're all sequestered for this. For this uh, pandemic here, while we're all shut in, and um, it's it's easy to do, it's easy to do, and especially when you have a wife who is such a an awesome awesome cook. And I'm not saying this because I'm not blaming this on my wife. Okay, <laughs> not I I am thrilled to be in here with a, a, a wife who can cook and who can not just cook, but who is fantastic, who has a natural talent for it. She does, she's just amazing, and I really do appreciate it. The pounds that are being put on are not her fault. They are all mine, <laughs> and I've got to do something to shed them. Let's see, National uh, Scrapbook Day. Oh, okay, National Fitness Day. We'll drink to that. And uh, wine has a lot of health benefits, so it can help keep you fit, right? Exactly, exactly. So more wine. More wine. Here's to National Fitness Day and to wine that, that helps keep us healthy and fit. National Fitness Day. It's also National Scrapbook Day. Uh, anybody keep a scrapbook? Um, I, I know people who kept scrapbooks. Uh, I, I really don't, per se, uh, but I, I, I think that's a, a nice hobby. It's a nice past time. National Home Brew Day. Okay, I'll drink to that. National Home Brew Day. Beer, wine, whatever it is, National Home Brew Day. I'll drink to that. There's National Join Hands Day. That's the first Saturday in May. All these are the first Saturday in May, by the way. Uh, and uh, I think under the circumstances, I would love to join hands. Uh, but... Uh, you know, of course, we have to keep that six feet of, of separation 
So uh, I guess so we'll just have to wait till next year to toast that one, huh? National Bombshells Day, the first Saturday of May. National Start Seeing Monarchs Day, first Saturday in May. And I think I'm not, I, I don't think they're talking about monarchs as in monarchy, as in kings and queens. I think they're talking about, uh, I, I haven't clicked on it to look, but I, I, I'm guessing that they're talking about the butterfly. National Start Seeing Monarchs. Because this is, this is the time of the year when the butterflies start to, to hatch. So uh, National Start Seeing Monarchs Day. So this would be the time that the monarch butterflies start hatching, right? So I'll drink to that. We, we've raised butterflies. When, we, when uh, my kids were younger, we, we raised some butterflies. It was a lot of fun, and it was very educational and very entertaining. It was, it was fascinating to watch. And it, it really does uh, give you an appreciation for life. It does. So here's to National uh, Start Seeing Monarchs Day. And there's one more, there's one more day for today, Second uh, May 2nd, is Free Comic Book Day. Free Comic Book Day, which has been a tradition in our house uh, for, for many, many years. It has been a tradition for us to go out on the first Saturday in May and um, pick up free comic books from, for Free Comic Book Day. A lot of the comic book stores in the areas, they will give out free comic books, free collections of comic books, and most of them are actually branded for Free Comic Book Day, Spe special editions made for Free Comic Book Day. And we've collected them. I have a closet full of comic books from Free Comic Book Day's past, uh, as well as my kids' Uh, they, they also have uh, a lot of their closets and under their beds and whatever. They're just full of comic books from, uh, you know, and they collect comic books anyway. But um, they collected a, a lot of them over the years from at Free Comic Book Day. Unfortunately, this year, due to the pandemic and the stay-at-home orders, the sequestering that we're in right now, I'm using the term sequester, and I know it has a different term, but it, it, you know, it has a different use, but I think it applies here because we're all kind of stuck at home. <clears throat> um, anyway, the, the, because of this, this year, as I understand it, the, uh, the organizers of National Free Comic Book Day have postponed the actual activities, the actual celebration of Free Comic Book Day until sometime in June. I, I don't have the exact date in June just yet, but I think they're waiting for most of the restrictions and most of the stay-at-home orders uh, to be lifted across the country, uh, across the U.S., before uh, they actually celebrate the day. So they've put it on hold. They've, they've postponed it until uh, sometime in June, but this is the official day, Free Comic Book Day. So here's the Free Comic Book Day. I love free. Can't beat free. Here's the free comic book day. You know, my son Tommy and I, uh, we had our, um, we've had our free stuff show, the free stuff show podcast. You can find it at free stuff show, uh, the, the free stuff show .com. And um, we did a video uh, a few years back on uh, to review free comic book day. We did a video review on it. And uh, you can actually watch it on YouTube. You can go to the uh, free stuff show uh, channel there. And I think it's the Free Stuff Video Show, I think is what it is. And uh, you can watch the video reviews, as well as our other video reviews over the years, that we've done video reviews on free stuff that we've received. And, uh, and we've done reviews on it. Free Comic Book Day is one of them. So you can check that out. It's, it's entertaining, I'm sure. Well, May 3rd, uh, you know, there are a couple of things on May 3rd. A Chocolate Custard Day. And there's a whole long list, and I'm not going to toast them all, but... Uh, National Lemonade Day, first Sunday in May. I think that's worth toasting. I love lemonade. Love lemonade. Here's the free, uh, well, free stuff. Here's the free, free lemonade. I like that even better. Here's the National Lemonade Day. I'm mixing my days up here a little bit. But May 4th, May 4th, I wanted to, uh, to make a point of, because it's this week, and because there's something really special happening on May 4th, which is, which is Monday. Uh, May 4th, 
There's National Weather Observers Day, which uh, well, I am part of the Skywarn Skywarn Network, and, and uh, Tommy and myself as hams, uh, we have in the past uh, done some we've done some uh, training for Skywarn. We are actually trained Skywarn spotters. National Weather Observers Day. There's National Renewal Day, National Orange Juice Day. National Orange Juice Day, National Candied Orange Peel Day. Interesting, we've got a lot of oranges in here. National Orange Juice Day and National Candied Orange Peel Day. There's Bird Day. There's Melanoma Monday, first Monday in May, and I definitely do not want to make light of that. Um, Melanoma Monday, that's very, very serious stuff. Bird Day is interesting. That's interesting. We have a, we have a bird thing going on right now in our backyard. A lot of birds... And uh, a pair of them have, a pair of Carolina wrens have taken over our our grill. One of our grills, we have a couple of grills in the back, but uh, uh, what happened was we uh, we forgot to cover the the other grill, the newer one, and uh, there was a an open slot in the back, and uh, these birds got in and decided, hey, this is a perfect spot for a nest, so they started building one. We opened it up while well, they were building it and caught them at it and we're like okay we got to clean this out so we got rid of the the what they were building they just started and then uh we did some grilling on it and then uh, we forgot to put the cover back on they came back and they said hey we got our we got our place back and they started building the nest and then the second time i just did we just i just didn't have the heart to kick them out the second time so i thought you know yeah just go ahead and let them have the grill for a couple of months let them have their babies and and then you know uh, uh, go through the process and fly off, and then we'll get our grill back. We have a second one; it's not a big deal. Um, so it is a little bit of an inconvenience for us, but we do have tenants now, and they are not paid tenants. They're not paying any rent or anything. I think uh, probably all we're doing is we're just enabling them to grow some birds that will leave the nest and then fly over the house to the front yard and poop on our cars. Um, that's a thanks we'll get for for uh, harboring. A pair of Carolina wrens for for a couple of months, but um, you know that's 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 nature, that's life, right? Anyway, here's a National Bird Day, and there's one more. There's one more special day. You know what it is? May the fourth. <clears throat> it's May the fourth be with you. May the fourth be with you. Star Wars Day. It's National Star Wars Day. Uh, we're all big Star Wars fan. I was a Star Wars fan ever since it. Uh, what is now known as episode uh, four opened up in 1977, in May of 1977. And, uh, and it didn't open on May 4th, but it, it opened towards the latter part of May. Um, towards the, it was just the opening of the, uh, the June or the, uh, the summer uh, movie season is when it, when it opened. And um, it was pretty exciting, pretty exciting. I was one of those kids that stood in line for for my tickets to Star Wars, and I saw that approximately first run. I saw it approximately six times in the theater in the first run. So all the millions that, and the billions that, or millions at that time that they made, the ten, hundreds of millions that they made off of the original Star Wars film in the first six to eight weeks of, of opening. Um, I was a, a, a contributor to that, a <laughs> big time, huge Star Wars fan. I was, and. <laughs> And I, am. I still like Star Wars, although I have to say I'm I'm not I'm one of those that are not entirely thrilled with what Disney has done to the franchise. Uh, not thrilled at all. But um, but Episode Four, uh, that's uh, you know that, that National Star Wars Day. Here's a National Star Wars Day, and may the Fourth be with you. My kids are Star Wars fans as well, so. Uh, uh, the, the second gen, ch second generation. <laughs> anyway, so I think that'll do it for the national days for today. I think that'll do it for the national days. Let's uh, let's go on to the Zinfandel. Uh, let me see before we start. Let me see anything else going on. Nothing going else on uh, going on the chat. And it looks like things are breaking up a little bit on <clears throat> Facebook, which is not surprising. But as long as we still have our stream going, I think uh, I think we're okay. Um, we had some issues last week 
with uh, and it looks like the stream stopped on on Facebook altogether, didn't it? Or at least no, maybe it didn't. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just my end. Uh, well, we had some issues last week. Before I get into the Zinfandel great part here, uh, and I apologize for that. Last week we had some storms come through, and uh, during the stream, and as a matter of fact. I was actually discussing it just out of out of uh, coincidence, you know. I was actually talking about the weather radios and how uh, we had such a huge run on weather radios at BuyTwoWayRadios.com. As you know, I'm the product manager of BuyTwoWay Radios, so we we sell radios of all all types, but uh, we also sell weather radios and emergency weather uh, radios. And I was kind of showing off uh, one of my radios here. This is the XT511, as a matter of fact, that I have right here. And uh, which is combination of weather radio and uh, and GMRS uh, two way radio, and it it has a lot of other features like a light and a, a USB charging port so you can charge other devices with it and about and it has a crank on it so you can you can uh, power it up manually if you need to. A lot of a lot of really cool features to this radio. And this radio has been on out for a long time. I've had mine for about. I've had mine for about 10 years, and it shows because of all the cracks and stuff. We've just used it so much. But it's come in handy many, many times, especially during power outages. But uh, I was just talking about that radio, showing it off, and I was, I was telling everybody about uh, the weather radios in general. And uh, everything kept cutting out on, on YouTube, all our, our, our uh, and, and Facebook and everywhere. All the streams kept cutting out. And then I, I took a little listen. I realized we had a storm coming through. We, we were having a storm coming through at that very moment during the live wine stream last week. And it was, it was really creating havoc with uh, our Internet connection until finally it just dropped. Our Internet connection just dropped altogether and we lost the stream. Now, fortunately, I was able to record a backup of the video, and I got it back up on, on YouTube. I recorded a... I, I, backed up the the video on YouTube but I uh, have not done it yet on Facebook for anyone who wants to watch but it, it is available on YouTube if you want to see it and we had just a, a lot of trouble with our internet connection our bandwidth and our bandwidth issues didn't even didn't really recover until uh, after the weekend it was it was still kind of rough the next day and uh, it was it, the storm that came through just did a, a lot of uh, uh, it just wrecked havoc on on a lot of things and, and it came through pretty fast but it was furious and we didn't lose power fortunately but we pretty much lost our internet so I apologize for that last week when you were trying to watch if you were trying to watch the stream and it kept cutting out on you and then it just dropped dead more or less. That was because we were we had these storms come right through. They just barreled right through, right during the stream. So that's pretty much what happened there. We have uh, I got a couple of internet stories, but I don't know if I have time to, to to go through those tonight. But I tell you what, emergency. You just never know when there's going to be an emergency, uh, when something like that's going to happen. So, um, you know, if you need an emergency weather radio, and I recommend that everybody have one. Go to buy2wayradios.com. That's buy2wayradios.com. Uh, you can pick up a weather radio there. And you can use the promo code WINESHOW. That's W-I-N-E-S-H-O-W. That's W-I-N-E-S-H-O-W. Now, I'm not posting the promo code visually on in the stream. The reason I'm not doing that is because um, th this for tracking... Uh, pretty much tracking anyone who who uh, purchases one here in the wine stream. Uh, what happens when it's posted visually? Uh, it, sometimes uh, uh, scrapers will pick that up and 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 post it on on places like uh, Retail Me Night and things like that, and then that just sort of destroys the whole what we're trying to do here to just kind of keep an eye on 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 sales. Now I'm not getting any extra for it. I work for Buy Two Way Radios. But I'm not getting any extra for this. Um, I just get to keep my job, <laughs> pretty much. So, um, you know, but it's just the savings are all for you, okay? You put, use the promo code WINESHOW and you get a 5% off your order. 
An extra 5% off your order of buy two-way radios on any radio. It could be, if you're into hunting or anything like that, and I've got one for hunters too, use it for, you can use it for that. Um, but that's, uh, that's a good thing to have. And did you know, did you know that with these emergency weather radios, which are also on a lot of, like this radio, this radio is equipped with, with NOAA weather channels and alerts as well. These, these uh, handhelds, a lot of these handhelds are, I've got another Midland here that, uh, that I use a lot that's also very, uh, that, that's also uh, featuring weather channels and weather alerts. The thing is, is that with the alerts, they're not just weather alerts. They're for alerts for the emergency, uh, you know, uh, broadcast system pretty much, the AS system and uh, the emergency alert system. And this, this includes all kinds of alerts. This includes amber alerts, silver alerts, uh, earthquake alerts, alerts for tsunamis, alerts for, you know, nuclear disasters, uh, any other national threats, and that includes pandemics, such as the one we're going through now, uh, a pandemic like the COVID-19 or the um, coronavirus pandemic they're going through now, they use this system for um, issuing alerts, and uh, these radios will pick up those alerts, so it's good to have these radios around, it, it really is. Anyway, uh, you can use the promo code WINESHOW, W-I-N-E-S-H-O-W, and you can get 5% off your order if you choose to buy some radios at buy2wearradios.com. Um, also, I, I just want to let you know, we've got, the, uh, we've got the Start Ugly giveaway. You know, I'm giving away a free copy of Start Ugly. Uh, my good friend Chris Kremitzos, who wrote this book last year, and let me see if I've got, here it is right here. You can... Uh, purchase the book on Amazon for $19.99. I don't get anything for this either, okay? I'm not, I'm not getting anything for this, but what I am doing, I am, and this is just costing me and Chris, because uh, I'm giving away a free copy of this book. I've already given one away uh, in the past during the holidays, but I'm giving away another free copy, and I may be giving away a third one at some point in the future, courtesy of Chris, uh, my good friend Chris. He said, you know, you buy one, and I'll give you one free, so... Uh, so I'm going to give both of those away, starting with this one. Now, what I want you to do to win this book is I want you to send me an email. Email me at rick at savoyamedia.com. That's rick at S-A-V-O-I-A-M-E-D-I-A dot com. And I want you to tell me what idea, project, or dream do you have but have put off starting or completing for one reason or another? In other words, if you've had a, a, a business idea or, or any idea for anything else, whatever kind of personal project or whatever it is, and it's something that you always wanted to do, but you just felt it wasn't right. You know, everything had to be, all the pieces had to be in place. You know, it had to be perfect before you started. It had to be just right. Everything had to be just so, or it wouldn't work at all, or it wouldn't be great you wanted to launch with a great big splash and, and it had to be perfect all the way around well this book is telling you that you don't do that because if you do that if you if you hold back on your dreams or your pursuits whatever it is you want to do uh, until you're waiting for that perfect moment and then for everything to fall into place it's not going to happen it's never going to happen and you're never going to realize that dream this book is explaining in a very simple story format that that's uh, that what you have to do is you just have to start. You just have to start ugly. Start ugly and then uh, and then build it up. Make it perfect as you go along. You know, work on it as you as you go along. And uh, and most people who have done anything in their lives that uh, uh, you know businesses and that sort of thing. That, that's what they did. They started ugly, and then perfected it as they went along. And I'm asking you. What idea, project, or dream do you have but have put off starting or completing for one reason or another? It doesn't have to be a long essay. No, you know, you don't need a long essay. I don't even read long essays anyway. But, you know, send me a short little two or three sentence thing, whatever it is, you know, a couple of sentences, maybe one sentence. Just tell me what it is. And um, I will look them over, and the winner, I will choose one person from that list, and the winner will receive a copy of Start Ugly by Chris Kremitzos. I'm going to do this as, start, as, as soon as I start receiving a whole bunch of entries. So, so do that, please. And I want to give this book away. It's sitting right here, as a matter of fact. 
Okay, this 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 book is is sitting right here. That's the one. That's that's one of the ones I'm going to give away. Okay, so please, you have a chance to win that book. Uh, that's start ugly. So. Let's see uh, what else is going on. Rob's joining us in the chat. Rob, it's great to see you. I'm glad you're here. Tell me how you're doing. Um, I've, uh, I, I, I know that, uh, you know, Rob's a regular here, but uh, checking in. Uh, doesn't always say much, but he's a regular checking in. But I, I do, uh, I, I haven't seen the last one, and uh, I, I kind of missed you there, Rob. So I'm glad you're here. And uh, here's to Rob, by, uh, by the way. Here's to, to my good friend Rob. Look at that. I toasted you, and you didn't even have to say anything. <laughs> That's just the kind of guy I am. So, um, any, anything else going on Twitch here before we start? Uh, Algorith says, hi, Rick. And Algorith says, does it work on all models? Uh, Algorith, are you referring to the uh, middle of XT5 alone? Are you talking about the, the, uh, the radio, or are you talking about, uh, if you can clarify that a little bit, uh, does it work on with all models? You're talking about the the emergency alert system, or are you talking about the uh, the uh, XT511 red uh, weather radio, or any of the other radios here? The emergency alert system itself, the the um, the NOAA weather alerts and channels, they work on any radio that uh, almost knocked that over. They work on any radio that is equipped with NOAA weather channels or NOAA weather alerts. Uh, oh, algorithm says um, uh, algorithm says emergency, emergency. Yes, it works. Um, it works on any radio that's equipped with NOAA weather channels or weather alerts. So um, the emergency uh, system, and basically how this works, it's the uh, NOAA we the NOAA Weather Service, the NWS, and uh, the uh, uh, well, well, where was going with that? Oh, okay. The, the The system is a system of uh, radio stations. They're actually VHF. They're on VHF uh, frequencies. Uh, radio stations all across the country, from one end to the other, and and actually they can be reached somewhere in Canada too. Canada has a very similar system to this, by the way. And uh, Canada has some other channels, and this will support both the uh, U.S. and the Canadian NOAA uh, weather channels. But the NOAA weather system, the National Oceana uh, Ocean Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, they have uh, a series of uh, radio stations all across the country, all spread out. Uh, they pretty much reach most areas. There are some areas of the country that are so remote that maybe they can't hit with a signal, but those are few and far between. Most of the country, um, in, wherever you are, in most areas of the country that are not too remote or out of the way, you can usually pick up at least one NOAA weather station. The NOAA weather stations are linked in with the emergency alert system. The emergency alert system, uh, system of course, is the system that sends out all the emergency alerts. The NOAA system sends out the NOAA weather emergencies. Now, the thing is that because they're both tied in together, that the NOAA system also, the National Weather Service system, also sends out alerts for all other emergencies, whether it's, you know, some that are not weather-related. You can go to, uh, I think, nws.gov. You can also go to ready.gov. If you go to ready.gov, there's a list of all of the uh, emergency alerts that uh, are sent out. Pandemic is, is one of them that's on the list. Earthquakes, uh, what is it, uh, nuclear, domestic nuclear power plant disasters, and also a, a nuclear alerts, like if, you know, like if we're under some kind of nuclear attack or something, that's, that's also under there. Uh, a lot of other things such as, uh, you know, tsunamis and, and things like that, those are all, those are all um, part of that. So they're they're all related to 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 they're all on that list. They're all on that list per se. Uh, what do we do? We lose Facebook here. No, we still up. Can everybody hear me on Facebook? Looks like I lost that on Facebook. We're we're good on YouTube. We're good on Twitch. We're good pretty much everywhere else <laughs> except Facebook. I don't know what happened there. There we go. It's back up and down. 
that's Facebook. So uh, anyway, that's what the emergency alert system is. And it's very, very important to, to have some sort of a radio or something nearby to get those kind of alerts. Uh, anyway, did that, did that answer your question, uh, Algorith? I, I hope so. Uh, let me know. Uh, there's more information if you go to buy2airradios.com and you go to actually go to ready.gov and if you go to the uh, uh, NOAA uh, weather website and uh, the National Weather Service, I think it's nws.gov, you can get more information on that as well. Uh, Algorithm says, yes, mine don't have it. Yes, well, um, you, you, do you have radios? What kind of radios do you have, Algorith? Uh, what, uh, it's a um, two way radios? Some, radio, some two-way radios do have those kinds of alerts. Some don't. Motorola. Okay, Motorola's, um, it, it depends on the Motorola radio. Some Motorola radios like the uh, Talkabouts, a lot of the Motorola Talkabouts, if they're fairly new, um, do have, are equipped with weather alerts. Um, a lot of the older ones don't. Uh, some of the uh, older talk about series do. Most all the new T series talk about radios do, and um, actually uh, radios like the T uh, two sixty, T two eighty, T four hundreds, and that sort of thing. T two hundreds. Most of them are equipped with NOAA weather uh, alerts and weather radios. But if you're talking about business radios, business radios, a lot of them do not. Like if you're if you're working for a company that has uh, some of the heavier duty uh, uh, business radios, or if you uh, work for maybe first responders, police, fire, something that has P25 radios, those don't necessarily have those. That's a completely different thing. But the um, some of the no, well, excuse me, some of the Motorola business radios uh, do. The commercial ones generally often most of those don't. They're strictly for commercial use. But some of the on-site business radios do, like uh, some of the um, RM uh, series and the RD. Uh, no, well, the RD series, no, but the RM series, like the RMU 2040s and the uh, RMU 2080Ds and things like that. They they do have some NOAA, uh, some some weather alerts, if I recall correctly. But mostly it's the newer talkabouts that do. So uh, with the Motorola's and. Um, Midlands, almost all the Midland radios are equipped with that. Of course, Midland specializes a lot in in that sort of thing. And uh, let's see. I think I pretty much lost Facebook here, didn't I? <laughs> anyway, the um, uh, some of the Cobras do. Some of the Cobra uh, consumer radios do. A lot more of the CB radios are starting to have them now. A lot of CB radios, some of the older ones don't, but a lot of the newer CB radios are starting to include no weather alerts. And uh, present CB radios as well do, do have those. Some hams will program their uh, dual band radios to receive NOAA alerts. I didn't mean to get into a long uh, dissertation about radios, but uh, uh, that's uh, kind of... I don't know what in the heck happened to Facebook here, but we lost. I lost Facebook completely. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Uh, let's see. Where were we going with this? Oh, yeah, it's getting kind of late. I was going to go ahead and do the grape thing. Let me go ahead and with the grapes real quick because I want to go through a little bit of the history of the Zinfandel grape before we close up. And... Uh, once again, I'm, I'm going to see if I can re refresh Facebook a little bit. Uh, I, I think I think I just completely lost Facebook. I don't know what happened there. Um, it's just it just died. for some reason Facebook just kind of died on me here. Um, I don't know what happened there. Anyway, so uh, that's that's two in a row. That's two in a row for Facebook. Two weeks in a row for Facebook. Uh, hmm. Well, I'm not going to worry about it now. All right. Well, we still have folks on Twitch, and we have people on YouTube. So let's go on with the show. Let's, uh, let's talk about the grape a little bit and what we have for the grape. 
This is the Zinfandel grape. Of course, we're drinking the member's mark Zinfandel Old Vine 2017. Which is not bad. Not bad. But let's cover the grape just a little bit. Um, and I'm reading this off Wikipedia. I'm going to read some of this off Wikipedia so that we um, kind of keep things moving here a little bit. Let's talk about Zinfandel. And um, I lost my background here, didn't I? Let's get that back. Kind of overdid it with that. There we go. Here's my background. Uh, Zinfandel is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a, lot of, a lot of people have heard of Zinfandel. It's an, it's an old grape. It's been around for a long, long time. The name is uh, Zinfandel. It's also known in Italy as Primitivo. Uh, that's... It's a variety of black-skinned wine grape, and the variety is grown in over 10% of California vineyards. Now, they did some DNA analysis on this grape, and it was revealed to have uh, actually been similar to uh, a Croatian grape, a one that was grown in Croatia. So it is believed to be originally from Croatia. And um, this, it looks like they're, they're related. It's, it's basically, essentially the same grape, according to, according to uh, DNA analysis. It's interesting, though, because <coughs> I was really previously unaware that they were doing DNA analysis on grapes. I guess it shouldn't surprise me, surprise me because they've been doing DNA analysis for just about everything else, so why not a grapes, right? <coughs> so... These, um, these grapes were introduced to the U.S. in the 1800s. I think about the 1800s, I'm not sure exactly how, how far into the 1800s, and it was kind of early in the 18th century, or excuse me, in the 19th century, or no, mid-19th century, I should say, according to Wikipedia. So I guess it would be the mid-1800s then. And it became known by variations of uh, a name applied to a different grape, um, called Zier Fandler from Austria. Anyway, the, uh, the grape uh, produces dry red wines, but there are other variations. There's a semi-sweet rosé, and there are some white wines available. There's a white wine called a White Zinfandel, which I'm sure you've heard of, and that, that's, uh, that, that's pretty much the same variety of grape. And it has six times the sales of the red wine. So white Zinfandel seems to be actually a lot more popular than the red Zinfandel. Now, personally, I prefer the reds over the whites, but I have had a white Zinfandel uh, from time to time, and it's not bad. It's, it's a pretty decent wine, uh, most of the ones that I've tried. The grape does have a high sugar content, okay? And as I mentioned before at the very beginning of the wine stream, it has a... Uh, this this one that we're drinking tonight is 14.5% alcohol by volume, but that's not necessarily the actual true alcohol volume of the wine. They, they're required to put a minimum on there, and that's all they're required. It can be a lot higher than that. And uh, generally for the Zinvendel grape, it the high sugar content can be firming into levels of alcohol exceeding 15%. It can be way over 15%. I mean, by 15, 15.5, 16.5, uh, you know, maybe even higher. So uh, that's something that um, isn't really advertised because uh, you don't want the, the grape to have too high of an alcohol content on the, or the wine to have too alcohol, high of an alcohol content. So it's generally advertised at, at, at the lower end, but it can. This wine that I'm drinking now, it, it is possible, it is quite possible that this wine that I'm drinking now is actually, it says 14.5% alcohol, but it could be 16.5% for all I know. could be 15.5%, 16.5%, who knows? Who knows? So, it's, it's not uncommon to have a higher alcohol content. This, this grape is kind of intense. The... Uh, the taste of Zinfandel, the taste depends on the ripeness of the grape. Um, the riper the grape, uh, apparently the more intense the taste is. It's, um, 
The red berry flute flavors are, are very pronounced in this wine. And these, uh, these berries can include um, raspberry, blackberry, anise, and pepper. And uh, as all, all the cherry, you can get some pretty intense cherry notes in these wines as well from time to time. And uh, Zinf where, where it's grown, Zinfandel is generally grown in, um, in these, and of course, as I said earlier, it believes to be originated, it is believed to have originated in Croatia, but it is grown in Croatia. It's grown in Italy. You would think that Zinfandel, you know, sounds kind of Italian, and it would be uh, you know, Italian wine, but uh, in Italy, that's kind of where they call it Primitivo. Primitivo, but it is basically the same grape. So it's grown in Croatia and in Italy. It's grown in Austria. It's grown in some. Uh, it's grown in Australia, and I believe in. Uh, let's see, in, uh, in in New South Wales, I think is what uh, they said was an area that it was often grown in. It's grown in Australia. It's also grown in South Africa, and uh, not. It's not a huge. Uh, uh, grape grown in South Africa, but it is grown there. And, and of course, it is grown in, and I said over 10%, it's actually uh, a little bit higher than that. It's 11% of California vineyards grow uh, the Zinfandel grape. And, of course, this one that we're drinking tonight, this member's mark Zinfandel is from Lodi, California. So it is a California, this is the California grape wine. And uh, California, they take certain they take a certain amount of pride in uh, in their Zinfandel grape and in their Zinfandel wine. So that there's a, there's a lot to be said for that. Anyway, so that's kind of the Zinfandel. I kind of gave it a quick run through. I was going to go a little more in depth with it, but we're kind of running short on time, so I want to kind of tie a lot of this up. There is one more thing I'd like to cover tonight. And of course, once again, we lost we lost Facebook, so. Uh, I don't know what happened there again, but uh, I'm. Uh, we are here on Twitch, so Twitch is here. Algorith says, "Question: Does the virus confinement influence what you wanted to drink?" Um, that's a good question. That's a very good question. Um, yes, to a point, it did. Mm -hmm. Yes, to a point. And I'll tell you what it is. Uh, and I and I covered this in a previous wine stream. I'm going to go over it again a little bit on the more serious side. Uh, I know a lot of us are, are shut in at home right now, and for some of the population that's still working, now my wife and I are still working, fortunately, right now, knock on wood, but that could change tomorrow. That could, that could turn on a dime tomorrow. So who knows what's going to happen next. Now hopefully the country will open back up. It's starting to open back up now, or the beginning of May. Some states are opening up. Some are not. There's a lot of contention going on between uh, people in various states and, and their governors and, and uh, their, their governments as to, to getting things open because people are really, really hurting. I mean, this being sequestered or being shut in for a week or so hurt people, but you go on to two weeks and it's really, you know, first week, maybe a little bit of fun, maybe a little vacation. The second week, it's not so much fun anymore and we're, we, we need to work and pay the bills start getting into three or four weeks and some people are getting in dire straits and they're losing their jobs and they're saying, well, you know, this is, this is getting pretty serious. We can't stay, can't stay uh, cooped up in here uh, too long. This is really going to hurt us. And it has. It's hurt the, the entire economy of the country and the world. And, of course, we're going on, what, seven weeks now? So people are very, very, uh, some people are very dire straits. And it's been very tough. Now, I've watched some celebrities uh, get online, and, and they're doing all their thing for online, entertaining people. And they're entertainers. That's what they do. That's their job. They're entertainers. But they're all getting paid for that, right? And they all have their jobs. There are a lot of people that do not have their jobs. And at first, the first couple of weeks, you're looking at the entertainers and saying, oh, okay, well, this is interesting. I'll sit here and watch these things. You know, it's, it's something newer than cat videos on YouTube. But... Over the, the, the days and the weeks that passed by, some people are starting to realize that, you know what, these guys, they can shut themselves in. It's not a big problem. And, and to listen to some of them complain about being shut in, 
especially some of the celebrities in their mansions, it's starting to really, really rub people the wrong way because here are some people that, can, that, that can't really pay their bills and are really having a hard time um, making it overall. And they don't, you know, it's, it's, it's a serious situation. And here I am doing my wine stream. So this is what this all, to go around full circle, I'm doing my wine stream. And on my wine stream, I have basically in the past, you know, I make fun of the two buck chucks and things like that. But for the most part, you know, I'll, I'll review wines that are anywhere from between 10 to $30, that sort of thing. I'll start reviewing wines that are fairly expensive sometimes. Some of my can't really afford, so it's good that I, I've gotten a few of them for free as gifts um, or to review, which is fine. But um, when this pandemic started, I realized that, you know what, people need an escape, for one thing, and they need something that's not politically infused or, or anything like that. And then we don't talk about religion or 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 politics on this show. It's not our thing. We, we're just sitting back. We're all just friends sitting back, enjoying wine, having a good time. The thing is hard to have a good time when you're wondering where, you know, how you're going to pay for food for the week or pay your bills or keep the lights on. Having realized this myself and, of course, being in a position where we have to bite the bill a little bit too. I mean, I can't go out and afford to buy a lot of these wines myself. So... Um, I thought, you know, the best thing to do is to cut back. And I know this is not, with Algorithm, I knew this was not really the answer you, you were looking for per se, but this is kind of the answer that, you know, I kind of have to explain what we're really doing here. Um, I'm not rich. I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not a big celebrity or anything like that. I'm just a regular person. I'm just an everyman, and that's what I'm doing. I'm not a sommelier. I'm just an everyman who loves wine and I know what I like. I know what I, I don't like. And that's 99% of the country. That's, that's why some people watch it and say, oh, what are your wine recommendations? Well, here are mine because I'm just a regular guy. And uh, I'm, I'm just telling you what I like. And maybe you'll like it too. Maybe not, but maybe you will. But the thing is, we're coming into a situation where I can go out and buy a $15, $20 bottle of wine. And most people, I think a lot of people can't. And a lot of people are saying, you know, wine is kind of a luxury right now. So that's what I'm doing here is I've scaled way back. And so I'm choosing wines. Normally, I would choose wines based on what looks good or maybe what I've taste tested or that sort of thing. To answer your question, Algorithm, I don't know it's it's a long answer, but uh, I kind of have to explain this a little bit. Um, because some people will be wondering, like, well, why are you even doing this? You know, aren't you like one of those celebrities? No, and um, I don't have that kind of money, period. I'm just a regular person. And I realize that a lot of people, even those who are still working and are looking for a respite, who are looking for some kind of a, a break, who like to sit back and have a little bit of wine, even those, they're having to cut back, as we are. And I'm thinking to myself, I can't do that. I've got to go through and say, okay, let's, let's look at wines that we can't afford, Maybe uh, a lot of us um, can't afford. And I'm picking the low dollar models of wine. I'm picking the lower ones. Now, yeah, well, everybody knows the two buck chucks and the, and, the, and the MD 2020s and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm not really going there because I think uh, we all have standards, right? <laughs> and uh, look, look, I'd rather not do the wine stream than sit there and review wine, the stuff that I wouldn't really even call wine. Uh, that's That's just not... It's not right. Um, but uh, I'm trying to, to kind of keep some class in the show, somewhat. So I'm, um, so I'm taking low, bo low dollar bottles of wine, $4, $5 bottles of wine, something on the low end that, that some people can afford and they can say, okay, you know, I can, I can get a bottle of this. And I'm sticking to that. I'm not doing any, any high dollar, any high dollar bottles of wine here during this thing. Uh, first of all, I can't afford it. <laughs> and second, uh, pretty much a lot of people in the country can't afford it. So I'm, I'm sticking with, uh, with, 
I'm going to review the stuff that we can say, hey, you know what, let me go get, I can spring for a three or four or five dollar bottle of wine, but what's any good? Okay, well, that's what I'm here for now, as I'm here to, to try to maybe, maybe help out with that a little bit. Does that answer your question, Algorith? I don't know, I know that was a long answer, but that's pretty much where I'm going at right now. And uh, I'm not going to finish this bottle tonight. I'm just I'm going to cap it, and that way I have some to save for tomorrow night, with my dinner tomorrow night. And uh, I don't. Uh, once again, we're drinking. Just uh, follow through on this again. We're drinking a members mark, or as I like to call it, the members markup. <laughs> Zinfandel. This is a Lodi, an old vine, 2017 Zinfandel. And I didn't mention to you earlier what uh, what uh, old vine means. Um, old vine basically means technically it's an old vine that really goes back generations. It's like a, a vine that of grape that that has been for lasted for generations and generations and generations, and that's where really really the good stock is on a wine. But um, in this case, uh, for the Zinfandel and for some other wines, uh, it, old vine generally means any wine that's over 30 to 35 years old. If there's a vine that's been growing for 30 to 35 years consistently and is, is putting out uh, fruit, that's considered an old vine. Anything 30 to 35 years or more. And there are vines out there that are 100 and 100 and some years old and I mean that have been around for a couple for several generations so and, and a lot of those those vines are in places like France and Italy and Spain and and places like that but uh, there's some that are very very old vines and sometimes you can get a really really good wine out of that so this is an old vine wine this members mark Zinfandel I picked it up once again at Sam's Club for six dollars ninety eight cents for this bottle of wine, and my re my final review on this before we go, my final review is that it is uh, pretty pretty decent. I'm surprised. I'm actually a little surprised. I really didn't expect much from a Sam's Club house branded wine. You know, a lot of the big box wines I I I, I think are kind of uh, cheesy, but. I didn't expect much from this, and I didn't really expect, um, especially for, you know, for the price. But it's actually a pretty decent wine. I like it. It's it's actually pretty good. Handsome uh, blackberry. Some uh, it's a little oaky on the oaky side. Uh, a fair amount of tenants in it. It's very bold wine. If you like very bold flavors, you're gonna like this wine. If you don't, this may not be the wine for you because it starts out pretty bold, and then it uh, as the as it finishes. It kind of it kind of lingers a little bit, but it's uh, very fruity, blackberry, and uh, what else did I taste in there? I think I tasted. Uh, uh, they say it has some plum in it, but I didn't taste any plum. And it went pretty well with the the foods that we tried tonight. It went pretty well with the um, uh, the chicken, the the uh, the steak, the 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 uh, meatball. It went pretty well with the. Um, cheddar cheese. It was okay with the um, Colby Jack, but it wasn't. It was better with the cheddar. <laughs> so that's my review on the wine. Before we go, there is one more thing I want to play for you, and I'm going to play it now. COVID-19, better known as coronavirus, has spread throughout the world. Symptoms of this respiratory disease may include fever, cough, and shortness of breath. These symptoms may show up 2 to 14 days after exposure. If you are experiencing these symptoms and have come into contact or are in an area with an ongoing outbreak, please call a hotline and or consult with a physician. Clean and disinfect high-touch surfaces. For more information, please visit cdc.gov forward slash COVID-19. Thank you. All right. Um... Please, folks, follow the instructions there. Um, watch for those symptoms. Hopefully no one has those symptoms, and uh, hopefully no one else gets sick from this. This is pretty serious stuff. Some people have died from it. How many people have actually died from the COVID-19 virus? Uh, I, I'm, I'm not really sure at this point because there seems to be some discrepancy as to you know, who's, who's actually died from it and who's actually died from other things that have been attributed to this. 
uh, erroneously or otherwise. I don't know. I'm, I, I really have no idea. And, uh, but uh, I'll just say that people have died from this, so it's pretty serious stuff. Uh, please keep things dis disinfected. Please keep washing your hands. Follow the instructions there. Look, hopefully we're all coming out of this. Hopefully that we'll we'll all get out of this uh, all okay and maybe better than before. Who knows? Um, I, I hope so. I really, really hope so. But in the meantime, and I tell you what, if you're hurting, uh, I, I, I feel for you. I'm right there with you. Um, this is this is a pretty serious thing. Uh, hopefully we will, you know, we have to keep faith, right? We got to keep hope alive. We, we have to just we have to get through this. We have to get through it together. And we're not going to get through it by fighting with each other. We're not going to get through it by being political or, or, or anything like that. We're going to get through it by being by banding together and just being as one and and just uh, we're looking out for each other, looking out for, for our fellow person, uh, just, just being there for each other. And I, I've seen a lot of good come out of this, a lot of people that have done amazing things for other people. And it's just, it, it, it just shows you that that there are still a lot of good people in the world. And I really, I believe in that. And I believe in you. Anyway, I hope you have, uh, we're going to close the stream down tonight. I don't know what we're going to do next week. We'll, we'll try to find another inexpensive wine to, to review. But in the meantime, I hope you have a great week. I hope everyone has a safe week. Please do not drink and drive. If you happen to go out, do not drink and drive. That's the one good thing about this. The bright side of this is that you can drink in the comfort of your home, apartment, hotel room, whatever, wherever you are, and just uh, stay there. Stay home. You can drink the wine. Stay home and do it, okay, in the comfort of your home. That's a lot safer. Please do not drink and drive. Don't text and drive either. That's another pet peeve of mine. Because, and, and you know what, I, I forgot to say this, but I wanted to thank everybody who joined me in the chat tonight. And I also want to uh, thank uh, uh, Fisterman and uh, Algorith for joining it, uh, me in, in Twitch. You kept the, the Twitch uh, stream going. I don't know what happened to Facebook. It just, uh, it's, it's cut out. So everyone who, uh, Lee and uh, who else uh, joined me there? It was uh, David and, and a few other people that joined in. I think Rob was there. And uh, I want to thank you for being there with me tonight. Anyway, thank you very much. I do appreciate you. And this is why I reiterate again, please stay safe. Have a great week. Have a safe week. So you can join me here next week on the Saturday Night Wine Stream, and we can all get together and drink with Rick. Good night.